Kaylee McKenney was pummeled with questions today after news broke that Trump told longtime journalist Bob Woodward earlier this year that he knew how deadly COVID-19 was, and at the same time, downplayed the virus to the American people. First, McKenney tried to paint Trump, who we all know to be selfish, as not a president who was lying about the strength of the virus to protect his re-election chances, but as a president who displayed confident leadership to keep America calm as hundreds of thousands of Americans died around them. Did President Trump intentionally mislead the American people about the threat of COVID, a pandemic that has now cost the lives of nearly 200,000 Americans? Absolutely not. Um, this president, at a time when you're facing insurmountable challenges, it's important to express confidence. It's important to express calm. Always play it down. Is playing it down, is that is that expressing calm? It well, seems dishonest. It seems Can like you read lie. the rest of the quote? That's how much they put in there. Oh, you excluded the last part. Um, we'll play the full thing on 60 please, Minutes please on do, do you deny please that do he explain. misled the American please, people of about course the I deny of this that. pandemic? And he makes clear that he doesn't want to see chaos, by the way, is the second part of the quote, which you failed to read. Um, the president, just days after having this discussion um, with Bob Woodward, said this from this podium on March 30th, he said, I do want them to stay calm. We are doing a great job. If you look at the individual statements, they're all true. Stay calm. Um, it will go away, but it's important to stay calm. So this president does what leaders do, good leaders. It's stay calm and resolute at a time when you face an insurmountable challenge. So That's what this president this case, has It will not appear that the president lied to the American public about the threat posed by COVID. The president has never lied to the American public on COVID. The president's been very, the president was expressing calm and his actions reflect that. Uh, on January 6th, uh, the CDC issued a Wuhan travel notice before any confirmed U.S. cases, among another a number of other actions. And I'd refer you to Dr. Fauci, who said that this president has an impressive response. I can't imagine under any circumstance that anyone could be doing anything more. That is the record of this president. McKenney also made a feeble attempt to explain why Trump knew COVID was more serious than the flu, yet told Americans it wasn't. Kelly, but how do you, how do you square the, the president's words to Woodward when he said, uh, this is a very delicate one. It's also more deadly than even your strenuous flu. This is deadly stuff. And then just two weeks after he told Woodward that, he said, this is a flu. This is like a flu. Um, and of course, he also said it was going to quickly go to zero. But that, that, that seems to be in direct contradiction to what he told Woodward. Well, the president was listening to his medical experts because you also have at the same time period Dr. Fauci, who said this, um, asking, asked if the seasonal flu was a bigger concern. He said this on February 17th. So right now at the same time, people are worrying about going to a Chinese restaurant. The threat is that we have in this country, we're having a pretty bad influenza season, particularly dangerous for our children. So he was reflecting that point. And again, days later in a briefing, he said, the statements I made are this, I want to keep the country calm. That is what leaders do. And that's what President Trump does. But, but, but that statement, Fauci is not comparing the two. He's not saying coronavirus is, it was like a he was at, it was a COVID interview, and he was asked about seasonal flu vis-a-vis -vis COVID, saying exactly what the president said. And in fact, the president was taking it more seriously because on the tape he noted uh, that flu could be worse, and he was taking action to address it. Um, once again, context matters that zero reported COVID cases. The CDC was implementing public health screenings. House Dems were preparing to file their first briefs in impeachment. One reported case, CDC, um, when there was one reported case, the CDC was activating an emergency operations center while Pelosi was releasing a statement criticizing McConnell over impeachment. On January 31st, the president issued a travel ban um, on China, one that the former vice president called xenophobic. That's what Democrats were doing while this president was acting, and his actions reflect the seriousness with which he took COVID-19. When McKenney was pressed on Fauci saying Trump's attention span is non-existent and he only cares about re-election, McKenney used other instances of Fauci praising America's response instead of addressing the actual criticism from Fauci. Yes, Kaylee, you, Jeff. you quoted Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci is also apparently on the record saying of President Trump that his attention span is like a minus number and his sole purpose is to get reelected. That's according to veteran journalist Bob Woodward. I think the bottom line here is that the president, by his own admission in private on the record, acknowledged the depth of this crisis 
and yet told the American people something very different. How is that, at its core, not an abject betrayal of the public trust? The president has always been clear-eyed with the American people. He was always clear-eyed about the lives we could lose. Uh, again, from this podium, he acknowledged that this was serious back in March, that 100,000, 200,000 lives could be lost. Um, and with regard to Dr. Fauci, you're referring to a quote he allegedly told Bob Woodward, and I can give you quotes that we can all play on loop and video of him saying that this response was impressive and he can't imagine anyone under any circumstance doing anything better. Uh, Dr. Fauci saying this, I can just tell you the president, uh, the first and only time I went and said, you need to do mitigation strongly, the response was yes, we will do it. The second time I went with Dr. Birx to the president and said 15 days to slow the spread are not enough, we need to go to 30 days. Obviously, there were a lot of people who had problems with that because of potential secondary effects. Nonetheless, the president went with the health recommendation. So there's a long litany of praise from Dr. Fauci, and you're referencing something he allegedly told Bob Woodward. It's, it's on tape. It's on tape, Kaylee. Well, I'm, reading, I'm reading to you what Dr. Fauci has said very publicly for all to see, and we can all play those video clips. I can get them in your inbox. The president yes, Trump on Zeke. February 7th says it's deadly stuff about coronavirus. In private, on the record. In public, though, February 28th, he says, one day, it's like a miracle, it will disappear. Well, it's, one it's, one, it's one thing to, as, a, as a public figure, not to try to incite panic. It's a very different thing, respectfully, uh, to lie and mislead the American people uh, about, no uh, was, about a crisis no one, that has claimed nearly 200,000 American no lives. No one is lying to the American people. One day COVID will go away. I think we can all hope for that day. Uh, we will have a vaccine because of this president tearing through bureaucracy to get a safe and effective vaccine. One day it will go away. That is a fact. It is not inciting fear. This president has expressed calmness from this podium, mobilized the greatest mobilization of the private sector since World War II, uh, got more tests than any country in in the world on COVID, a vaccine, which by the way, it'll be a record for a novel pathogen. The timing of this vaccine, should we get it by the end of the year or should we get it even three years, which was the timing of Ebola? This president has done an unprecedented job dealing with COVID, um, one that Dr. Fauci even acknowledged. And like I said, I will get you that clip to your inbox. Yeah. When challenged on calling COVID-19 an insurmountable problem, while the rest of the world has largely flattened their curves and prevented large scale death, McKenney was unwilling to accept that more people have died in the United States than anywhere else in the world, and instead focused on data to distract from Trump's epic failure. You mentioned a few minutes ago that this was an insurmountable problem. I think that that's a, quite a point of dispute. If you look around the world, the United States leads the world in, in confirmed cases, in, in deaths from COVID-19. So doesn't the president have their responsibility for that record as well as the testing and, and the vaccine development that you're just talking about. No, when you've looked at the rest of the world, um, in particular, the case fatality rate in the United States is about 3%. Uh, the world is 3.3%, the UK 11 0.9%, France 8.8%, Belgium 11.2%, and um, you can go through the various Western world countries that have dealt with COVID, and we've done a very good job. The case fatality rate notes that, and that's a testament to our therapeutics that the president has navigated. The, US is still, is still, of course, very the case high. fatality rate is the metric that shows how well our response has done with therapeutics, and we are leading the world um, in having the lowest case fatality rate. It's a very important metric and one that's a testament once again to a president who ripped through barriers, getting us from Desivir, convalescent plasma, and other very good working therapeutics. How Trump can hold rallies knowing full well the deadliness of the virus is something McKenney tried to explain away, but utterly failed to do so. Then why did the president have thousands of people, many not wearing masks at a, at a rally last night in, you know, in, in a state that has limited outdoor gatherings to 50 people? Why is he going to Nevada this, this weekend to hold similar outdoor rallies? Uh, the gathering of these large numbers uh, of people in violation of his administration's own guidance and of the best advice and guidance of local officials who he has said should have the final say in these matters. People have a First Amendment right, if they so choose, to show up and express their political opinion in the form of a peaceful protest, which is what um, the president held. And there's a real double standard here. CNN had on a guest, uh, apparently a doctor, uh, Rob Davidson, who said, now true, there are social distancing issues with regard to the protest we've seen around the country. However, this is a public health crisis. They are marching against systemic racism. So if you're allowed to march in aggregate um, in those protests, you are also allowed to show up at a political rally. You have a First Amendment right in this country. Have a responsibility to keep people safe. Mario. And this next reporter can't even get his question out because of how baffling 
McKennany's excuses and the story of Trump downplaying the virus actually is. How can the president bear no responsibility for the 200, almost 200,000 lives lost when he downplayed the virus initially and he knew that it, how contagious and deadly it was? I don't understand how that can... The president never downplayed the virus. Once again, the president expressed calm. Uh, the president was serious about this when Democrats were pursuing their sham impeachment. Uh, he was expressing calm and he was taking early action and his actions are reflective but, but of how seriously he the, took the, COVID. The tact that he took, the language that he used, no, you, you said that he used hopeful language. Does, does he regret that given where we are now? No, this president embodied the American spirit that when we face a challenge, a crisis, a pandemic, uh, we come together, we can be optimistic, we can be serious about it, we can take it seriously with our actions, which is exactly what this president does. It's why we lead the world in testing, uh, doing far more than the number two, which is India. He took this seriously, but he still expressed calm. Uh, our food supply chains were at risk, that we could not have mass runs on grocery stores. Uh, the markets um, also, the economy was in play here. Um, we didn't want to, there to be a huge crash and panic. He expressed calmness from this podium, but he has always taken it seriously, and the response, an unprecedented response, really reflects that. Be sure to like this video to help it spread and subscribe and turn on notifications so you get my next video in your inbox. Thanks for watching. My name is Brendan Plank with Reflect. I'll see you in the next one.